if you refer to the chart on the chalkboard, um, we, we're going to move now into the holy place, not the holy of holies or the, the holiest, a lot of different terms for it, but where the uh, three objects are, the seven branch candlestick, um, the uh, table of showbread, and the altar of incense. And um, once you begin to move out of the, of course, the outer court into the holy place, <clears throat> in these objects you begin to see that there's a different emphasis, as it were. Um, it begin, the emphasis begins to be more on understanding the very nature of God, to really, really see that, not just seeing that he's crucified, not just seeing a lamb killed, but beginning to understand the nature of that. And so with the candlestick, you begin to see that fire consumes the oil, and it does it for one purpose, so it can give light. And with the table of showbread, you see that the priests consume the bread, and it is for life. And at the altar of incense, fire consumes incense, and it's for a sweet savor unto God. So let's start with the um, seven branches candlestick, the golden candlestick. If you will, turn with me to Exodus 25. <clears throat> Exodus 25, verse, uh, we'll start with verse 31, and I'm going to skip a couple of verses here, so I'll do Exodus 25, verse 31 and 32, and then I'll tell you it's just a few more verses down when we get to it. All right, verse 31. <clears throat> and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, his flowers, shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of, one, of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Now let's skip down to verse 37 and 38. And I think I got them here. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And then verse 40, And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. All right, so uh, let's, go, let's, uh, look at, let's go to Numbers and look at a few more verses here. Numbers 8, Numbers chapter 8. We'll start at verse 1. And this, the verses we read is God giving the instructions, and this one is carrying them out. <clears throat> Numbers 8, verse 1 through 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so, and he lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold, unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work according to the pattern which the Lord had showed Moses, so he made the candlestick. All right, so <clears throat> if you know anything about typology, gold usually represents God. Uh, the the, the uh, brazen altar and the laver were made out of brass, or br it was a brazen altar. And, um, but the the things that were within the holy place were primarily made of gold, and um, gold represents deity. <clears throat> um, and I remember reading one time, uh, it's here in verse uh, 4, and this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold. And the Spirit of God just sort of whispered to me, said, that represents God being beaten for us. That God, we, we, we kind of understand Jesus of Nazareth, you know, but he was God. <clears throat> and
And God came down, and he was beaten for us. And you begin to realize this is not just, uh, I don't know, I, I'm going to say it like this. It's not the best way. This is not just salvation for us. This is something where God, this, this is identifying God to us. And that's what I said. The things in the holy place, the three different objects, they are going to start speaking of his nature, not just his work. They're going to start speaking of who he is, or as it were, what he is made of. And he can be made of gold, but he is, this is, represents a beaten work. And that's, what it, that's the terminology that it uses, that this isn't just uh, light a candle. You understand the difference? You know, this is a beaten work. And you must see those two together. They're one. It's God, but it's showing his nature, his selfless nature. Okay. So um, <clears throat> that beaten work of gold is what gives light. Not just a lit candle gives light. That's not what he's trying to communicate. It is a beaten work where the true light of who he is begins to be shined forth. <clears throat> All right, you see this in um, 1 John. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. <clears throat> And this, and this is giving us light to be able to see. All right. Well, here in the New Testament, the scriptures are going to give us light to be able to see him. Okay. Verse 1, 1 John 1, 1, <clears throat> and, and forward to verse 5. That which was from the beginning. Okay, so the first word there is that. You don't know what it is, it's that. Okay, and he's about to explain this reality of what that is. That was from the beginning, people, you know, I can hear John, it's that. I want to talk about that, that was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon. And our hands have handled of the word of life. And notice the word life. For the life was manifested. All right. So whatever that is, it has a certain kind of life that was manifested. Okay. And we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that. There it is. What that is is eternal life. That's eternal life. All right. Which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Get ready. This then is the message. Here's the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, so he is that light. He's whatever the old covenant and the old tabernacle and the old things that were there, those were just symbols. That was actual gold and somebody took a hammer. He is God and he was beaten. And light began to be seen when God was beaten. And now we're seeing who he is. That. There's, that. there's what that was. There's what was from the beginning. And now light is starting to shine because of that. Because of that. <clears throat> and what is darkness anyway? The absence of light. So anything that's not Christ crucified is us. 
is, is darkness, is us. And so John was hoping in his writings as he set forth these things, he was hoping to touch our hearts. He was. He was hoping to touch our hearts and to draw us away, just like he was talking to Jews and Gentiles and whoever would read this, to draw us away from religion and to draw us away from just, I'm going to say this, from just a salvation message. He wants us to understand what light is. Christ crucified. He wants us to have fellowship. And truly, our fellowship, he said, is with the Father and with the Son in this. All right, so in the outer court out here, where the altar is and the, the labor is, they comprehended God as a slaughtered lamb. But in the holy place, God is, God is beaten so that the light can be seen of who God is, to truly comprehend beyond our sins, beyond our failures, beyond earth, beyond time, that which was from the beginning. And you see that over in John 1, 1 through 1, 1. John 1, 1 through 11. So turn to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> verse 1, in the beginning was the Logos, the Word. And the Logos was with God, and the word Logos was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Okay, so I always emphasize this every time I read it, but the beginning is not things being made, not creation. The beginning is before creation. Verse 1 is the beginning. Verse 3 begins creation, but the beginning, folks, is not based on time and space and stuff. Our beginning is not based on three years of Bible school. Our beginning is not you know, 15 years in the same church. Our beginning is not I read the Bible or I have devotions. Our beginning is when we begin to comprehend that. Whatever that is. And we don't need to be saying too much about it until we know what it is. Until we've seen that and we're having fellowship with John. And with the Father and with the Son in the relationship of who they really are. All right. So, um, verse 4, in him was life. And the life was what? Then what kind of life is it? Beaten gold. Right? Amen? That's what it says. In him was life, and the life was the life. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. And it sure doesn't. See, there is no way the human mind is truly going to grasp when we say beaten gold, that divine life beaten is the light. You, that can't be comprehended. We can hear it, and we can, we can agree. But to comprehend that, to have seen that, is different. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness. What? To bear witness of the light. Okay, so John was one of the first ones who stepped inside the, 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 the court, as it were, and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And he said it twice. You remember that, right? One time he says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away. He takes away. He takes away. The, this lamb is about taking away. But the next time, he said, just behold the lamb of God. And disciples went after him. Now he's adding. Oh, yeah. Amen? Now he's adding. And this is what needs to happen with us. We need to begin to comprehend him all the way into the Holy of Holies. Which, Lord willing, will... Get into some of that. Uh, the same came 
to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So it's basically saying, I can't, I, I can just, I'm, this is just, I'm sure this is just me. Gather up all the priests. Hey, all of us, come, come, come. We're able to enter in into the outer court. We can come into the outer court, but let's go also into the holy place. Let's enter in to the holy place. All of us priests, come here. Let's stand around the golden candlestick. Before this light shined, it had to be beaten. It had to be formed like a, like a vine with branches. And I'm not going to get into all that part, but it had to be formed like a vine, which it was, like a vine. Except it was filled with oil, filled with the Spirit of God. And so he's, this priest, this John, says, and by the way, he was a priest. In case you didn't know that, John the Baptist was. So John says, let's gather around. Look, so he's actually doing this. Do you understand that? This is the thing that is so amazing. He's actually doing this. And he says, look at this. I want you to look real close at this. They go, yeah, we've seen it a lot of times. No, no, I want you to see it. I want you to see the light from it. Oh, we see, and they look around at everything and go, oh, see, I can see everything. No, no, I don't want you just to see what's in the room from the light. I want you to see the light. I'm here to bear witness of the light. Yes. This is our God. This is our God. Yes. Can you believe it, fellow priests? This is our God. And they would go, you're an idiot. Go out in the wilderness and preach. Verse 9, that was the true light. 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 Okay. So, we see that there is a consuming that goes on with that light just like there is with the sun. The sun is constantly burning up its resources, as it were, so it could give us light. We go, you know, we, we use it to see our life on the earth. <laughs> this is sad. This is, this is sad. Let us pray. But, I mean, you know, I mean, it is sad. And we, and we use it for when it's cold. Oh, oh, warm me. Son, warm me. You're the best, you know. But we don't see that that light is coming from it constantly giving up itself, giving up itself. And this is what we're going to find in this holy place is that all three of these things are, are speaking of a selfless nature that is so self-forgetting, it just loses to whatever extent it possibly can go that we might gain. And here's the other thing about it. This nature doesn't have to declare that it does that. Right? It doesn't have to declare it. It just does. The sun, you don't hear the sun going, hey, I'm sick of this. I need you all to know what I'm doing. No, the S-O-N doesn't do that either. All right, so verse 9, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Here it comes, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own beat that gold to death. His own came, he came unto his own, and they beat him to death. They beat pure divine life they beat gold and from that the light has shined for all generations to know to see him to know him amen let's pray lord we thank you for these times to 
really, Lord, not just have classes. Thank God the Bible school isn't going on in that sense. Thank God that in, in our hearts, uh, the way you're forming in us here is that we're priests and we're really gathering around and we're, we're, we're hearing the word of God. Lord, I'm just quoting a lot of the word. And we're hearing the word of God as if a, a priest were just reading to us, uh, which was done many, many times in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, um, where the word was read and people were moved. And Father, we just, we feel something more than just trying to get something for a grade or something to, you know, Lord, we, we want to we wanna be molded into what you want us to be. And to do that, to be a branch, Lord, it's not just on a tree. It is to be joined with him in beaten work. So that we can truly understand his nature and see it come out of us and see it flow out of us right up to the fire and the fire just gives light instead of consumes us, instead of destroys us is a better word, instead of destroys us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're, we're here to fellowship with you and your son, Jesus Christ in who you are and who we want to be formed into. We are one already. We are like those Levites. We've made the leap from, from nature to oneness, but now we just want to be formed after that. We want to see to it that we're made. We're made. We're the temp temple of God. We're the tabernacle. We're the habitation of God, that we're made after the pattern that we see above and not just in the earth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Jim, you were going to come pray for several people.